FAA has made a big mistake by delaying SpaceX's launches just to punish Elon Musk. Why can I say that confidently? Find out the answer in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. On the 10th of October, 1967, the Outer Space Treaty entered into force, definitely manifesting human desire for space exploration and activities to transcend national interests, political agendas, and conflicts. The treaty establishes space as the province of all mankind, promoting peaceful exploration and prohibiting the appropriation of celestial bodies by any one nation. Notably, the treaty came just six months after the most tragic space accident of the Cold War, which witnessed the Vladimir Komarov cosmonaut fall from space making him the first human to die in a space flight. His death was deemed caused by the Soviets' vain impatience in developing Soyuz 1 against the 10-manned Gemini space missions the U.S. launched between 1965 and 1966. Komarov's terrible death also clearly depicts the aftermath of intertwining pure space exploration with political motivations. Despite a clear awareness of the harmful effects of politicizing space, at present some regulatory bodies like the FAA still impose bureaucratic delays that, some argue, are retaliation against individuals with political conflicts of interest with them and their parties. Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, has been famous recently for supporting Donald Trump. It's likely the root cause for the significant regulatory hurdles that his rocket company SpaceX has faced. And this, in Elon's own words, is smothering America. America is being smothered by legions of regulators, often inept and politically driven. However, the idea of targeting SpaceX just to punish Elon is a misguided one. While Elon Musk is widely recognized as the founder and driving force behind SpaceX, it is important to acknowledge that the company is not solely possessed by him. Elon Musk himself also affirms that he just owns about 40% of SpaceX. The remaining ownership is distributed among various institutional investors and early team members, including notable stakeholders like Alphabet, Google's parent company, which holds around 7.5% of the company. Therefore, any action that hinders SpaceX's development development is a violation of the law, unfairly punishing the legitimate interests of other shareholders. Additionally, while Musk's ownership stake is considerable, it is important to recognize that SpaceX is a collaborative effort involving many talented engineers and executives who contribute to its success. When Musk founded SpaceX in 2002, he was joined by several key engineers and early employees, such as Tom Mueller, who was responsible for developing rocket engines, and Gwynne Shotwell, who became the company's president President and COO. Afterward, in April 2023, SpaceX hired former NASA human spaceflight chief Kathy Luters to take over as a general manager of the company's Starbase facility in South Texas, where the development of the giant Starship Deep Space Transportation System is centered. In this position, she reports directly to SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwynne Shotwell. Since then, Elon Musk has seemed less active in providing updates on Starship's operations, demonstrating a major reorganization, where Elon no longer holds a key role in the premier center for the Starship mega rocket. In this way, he can focus on his other company's projects. To be honest, it's not the first time a significant reorganization has been undergone in SpaceX's Texas. In 2022, there was a notice that SpaceX President and CEO Gwen Shotwell and Vice President Mark Juncosa, two Two of the most influential executives at the company would oversee the facility and operations of the company's Starbase location. Both of them seemingly stepped in for Elon Musk as the CEO shifted his focus to Twitter, meaning that Elon Musk would step back from some of his day-to-day -day at this spaceport. Twitter by then was in a precarious position after the Tesla CEO and SpaceX founder had purchased the social media platform for an inflated price of $44 billion, saddling it with immense debt. The immediate implementation of far-reaching changes, or threats of changes, scared off existing advertisers, slashing the company's already tenuous revenue, and Musk himself admitted that the company as it stood was losing billions of dollars per year and could face bankruptcy if it's planned to charge a subscription for a verification badge, a service that was, in theory, previously free, was not highly successful. 
Musk's plan at that time was to appoint Gwen Shotwell to officially assume oversight of the company's Starship program and Starbase facilities. Additionally, SpaceX CEO Mark Juncosa, an engineer who had successfully led the Starlink program since Musk fired several cautious CEOs in 2018, has assumed technical leadership of the Starship program in the summer of 2022. For that reason, the FAA targeting Elon Musk through SpaceX is a wrong strategy, since, in fact, they are actually attacking those like Kathy Luters, Gwyn Shotwell, Mark Juncosa, and thousands of other workers. They all work day and night to serve the national interest, including NASA's Artemis program. Starship's early test flights played a vital role in making the rocket reliable as soon as possible and allowed SpaceX and NASA to test more complex technology, such as in-space refueling, required to make the Artemis lunar landings possible. In the long distant future, once the gigantic rocket is able to carry humans to the moon, America will have more opportunity to win China in the new space race. China aims to land its astronauts on the moon by 2030, and NASA Administrator Bill Nelson wants U.S. astronauts to return to the lunar surface first. However, given the delay of Artemis due to hardware readiness and the red tape, it would be hard for that dream to come true. We all want to see America triumph again in this century, but we don't want to see any more accidents caused by the go fever approach. Of course, SpaceX has ramped up itself to keep up with that goal, and the FAA as well as the government should highly estimate the company's effort and desire. Unfortunately, another move of the FAA and the government even makes things much more complicated as they are also irresponsible in protecting the rights of private U.S. companies, typically SpaceX in another country. You probably won't forget the story of Starlink in August, as a Brazilian Supreme Court justice, Alexandra de Morris, blocked the financial accounts of Starlink in Brazil. For those who don't know, he and U.S. tech billionaire Elon Musk have a months-long feud over content moderation on X in Brazil. De Moraes has ordered certain accounts suspended for allegedly spreading disinformation, which Musk has challenged as censorship. More ridiculously, while their conflict just relates to X, Brazil's Supreme Court has blocked the bank accounts of Elon Musk's Starlink services. Tech lawyer Preston Byrne wrote on X, This is some really lawless stuff coming out of Brazil. SpaceX is not Elon Musk. He has about half the cap table. The rest is owned by private investors. He also criticized the U.S. government's irresponsibility in protecting the rights of private U.S. companies. If the U.S. government were doing its job, it would use diplomacy to put a stop to this overnight. This resulted in SpaceX's latest movement in early September, when satellite-based internet service provider Starlink backtracked and said it would accept and enforce a Brazilian Supreme Court justice's order to block the Elon Musk billionaire's social media platform, X, regardless of the illegal treatment of Starlink in freezing our assets. We are complying with the order to block access to X in Brazil, the company statement said. We continue to pursue all legal avenues, as are others who agree that Alexandra's recent order violate the Brazilian constitution. Musk has been relentlessly posting in recent days, lambasting de Morris as a criminal. This evil tyrant is a disgrace to judges' robes. Musk wrote on X alongside a photo of de Morais, some 17 hours before Starlink announced its decision to comply with the order. Of course, the tension between SpaceX and the FAA isn't new. On X, SpaceX previously shared its grievances. For nearly two years, SpaceX has voiced its concerns with the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry. It is clear that the agency lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials, but also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These distractions continue to directly threaten national priority and undercut American industry's ability to innovate. Clearly, these fierce acts of resistance by SpaceX are just a question of time before the company loses patience with the U.S. national agency. Agency. This ultimately has forced SpaceX to go to court with the FAA. SpaceX will be filing suit against the FAA for regulatory overreach, Elon tweeted on September 17. Suing means that SpaceX will go through the discovery process with the FAA, which means their lawyers get to look at a lot of internal material, like internal communications. They are doing this because they hope to uncover evidence of political lobbying against SpaceX. I am highly confident that discovery will show improper, politically motivated behavior by the FAA, he said. The tool allowing the FAA to delay the Starship Flight 5 is the Part 450 regulation, which went into effect in March 2021. 
SpaceX, and other commercial spaceflight companies have faced licensing delays due to this regulatory framework. Dave Cavassa, president of the Commercial Spaceflight Federation, criticized the system, saying the way it is being implemented today has caused severe licensing delays, confusion, and is jeopardizing our long-held leadership position. Cavosa emphasized that the process is taking years and that companies are getting stuck in an endless back-and-forth process. These delays pose a real threat to the U.S.'s standing in the global space race, as other nations, particularly China, continue to make strides in their own space programs. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.